Uh, Priti, are you there? Yes, I should. Yeah. Mm. Go ahead. Uh, welcome to everybody for the International Day of Yoga on June 20th. This is 2021 International Day of Yoga. Um, just for the chief guests' um, uh, knowledge, we have uh, been on uh, this celebration for the last 21 days. We um, started on June 1st, where we opened three tracks and three uh, sets of people joined uh, either the regular classical yoga for stress management or for uh, diabetes and prevention and, uh, and uh, general wellness or uh, the pain management. So we had three tracks and uh, about close to 100 people have been uh, taking these classes and they are uh, actually, uh, they are now almost done with uh, 21 days of yoga. And of course, the general uh, public or teachers, volunteers, and uh, these three tracks uh, and senior or senior class members are all here uh, to listen to uh, you all. So with that, I'll ask Preeti to introduce the guests. Thank you. Namaste, everyone. Uh, it gives me immense pleasure to introduce today's guests. Um, uh, first of all, I'll go ahead and introduce Swami Podhanandaji. Namaste, Swamiji. Uh, Swami Podhanandaji is highly respected in America and in India as accomplished teacher of Vedanta and meditation. Originally, Swamiji is from Kerala, India. He did his undergraduation in economics and then joined the Saraswati order, one of the 10 sannyasa order established by Sri Adi Shankaracharyaji. Um, presently, Swamiji is the spiritual founder and director of the Sambodh Society in America and 11 other organization of Sambodh Foundation in India. Uh, Swami Bodhanandaji is author of several books of Vedanta and Yoga and um, he loves to share his um, Vedanta knowledge to everyone. Um, I'm highly blessed here to introduce you Swamiji. Um, the next speaker for today, we have our, our own Yogashri Sri N.V. Raghuramji. Um, Yogashri N.V. Raghuram is, is a chairman and spiritual founder, uh, founder of Yoga Bharati and professor of uh, yoga philosophy in Swami Vivekananda Yoga Research Foundation that is Svasa in Bangalore, India. Um, Sri N.V. Raghuramji is trained under some of the most renowned exponents of yoga such as Professor Satyanarayana Shastri and has been practicing yoga since his, child, his early childhood. He is uh, instrumental in uh, introducing yoga therapy in neurological clinic in Germany and start, starting yoga therapy in hospitals in Italy, Turkey, and China. He has traveled to several countries in Asia, Europe, and America, giving discourses on stress reduction and programs based on yoga. Welcome, Dr. Ramji. Um, our th third um, guest today, um, our very own Dr. Prasad Kaipaji. Um, Dr. Pra uh, Prasad has been an advisor and coach focusing on innovation and leadership since 1990 uh, so, uh, for about 120 C-level execu executives in global Fortune 500 companies. Uh, Prasadji coaches them to channel their creativity to come up with innovation, dis innovative decisions, products and services. He assists clients in becoming effective in managing people as well as oneself, that is the personal mastery, in exploring, in, um, also in exploring innovatives and such a, uh, strategic decisions. He has deep exposure of Hindu spiritual literature like Vedas, Upanishads, and brings this rich Eastern, uh, this to read, uh, this each register, Eastern values into the business world. Dr. Kaipa conducts practical Vedanta sessions in San Francisco Bay Area. Um, welcome, Dr. Prasad. Back to you, Shriji. Uh, Swamiji, can you uh, address? Thank you very much. Salutation to Prasadji, Raghuramji, and uh, my love to Shuni and uh, Anil for putting this program together on the eve of the International Yoga Day. 
what is the importance of yoga i see we are moving from the bhoga culture to the yoga culture though yoga is a contribution of the hindu civilization it has become a world uh, heritage now the whole world including atheistic china theocratic iran materialistic america and europe and africa wherever you go you hear the glory of yoga you can see a yoga studio in every city all over the world so what is the secret of the acceptability of yoga some people say yoga is india's soft power india projects itself or hinduism projects itself through yoga ayurveda vedanta and all that so what is the significance of yoga at this at this this pandemic times i can see three things one is there is a health crisis before the pandemic and during the pandemic and after the pandemic also the crisis will continue if you go to the hospital you come back with another disease and you pay through your nose though we have conquered traditional diseases the lifestyle diseases have not been addressed because of our wrong we are eating and living life there is a true health crisis how, how much our money you put into the health sector we are not able to gain the return what they call the roi you don't get the return from that. not only that we outsource the health as a result of that we lost our power over ourselves we lost the idea we forgotten the idea the health is an inner value inner property you can invoke it so one is the health crisis that we see all over the world and the population the older people their number is increasing Now it is fourteen or eighteen percent. It is going to increase to thirty percent or forty percent. People are above sixty or seventy-five, seventy, and that is another health crisis looming large in the world today. Because they are not productive, but they are they require hospitals or nurse nursing homes or all kind of. Uh, health uh, support they require and the number of working population is decreasing and uh, therefore each one of us will have to take care of our own health whether you are old or young so we have to understand that the outsourcing health is no more going to be workable we have to understand that health is our response every individual is responsible for their own health there comes the importance of yoga the practicing yoga integrating body mind and spirit and invoking the spiritual power and living in harmony with the world the nature and society we will be able to invoke overall health so health is a quality where we live in harmony with the world with our body our emotions our intellect and spirit when you achieve that harmony then you can invoke the natural health health is natural to us health is not is to be not is not something to be added on to us it is our essential nature it has to be invoked so that is one thing the importance of yoga and yoga alone can shake your cost free without any expense without any side effect without any depend upon anybody you can secure your health and increase your immunity practice yoga pranayama
emotional balance, intellectual clarity, and spiritual enlightenment. That is how we create health. Otherwise, it is going to be very, very expensive. Only the top-notch people can afford that kind of uh, expenses for health. And even them, themselves, they themselves are not healthy. So for health, securing health, public health and private health and social health, we have to practice yoga. And the second crisis is environment. Because of the bhoga culture, the more we consume, the more we are happier, that kind of wrong philosophy. Or the more we consume, the more we uh, flourish, that kind of wrong philosophy is to be addressed. The environmental health is very, very important. And the way we consume, that America, Europe, and China, now India also is on the same path. This kind of consumption is in, uh, it's unsustainable. You cannot sustain that kind of consumption. So yoga teaches you your happiness is not outside in consumption. Your happiness is in observation. Observe nature. Observe your thoughts. Observe your uh, neighbor. And that observation and the resultant detachment will help you reduce your consumption need, the compulsive, obsessive need for addictive, need for uh, consumption will be. It may be a little counterintuitive because we are in that idea, we have to increase your consumption, consumption led growth and GDP and all that. So one has to understand our environmental health depend upon the less we can see. So we have to promote this ideology Small is beautiful, less is more. That kind of philosophy has to be propagated. And that's the meaning of yoga. So yoga helps you discover your dignity and health and happiness within yourself without consuming more. So that's another importance of yoga. And the third importance of yoga is another crisis looming in the world is intolerance. Racial intolerance, Religious intolerance, nationalistic, uh, nation-based intolerance, and all kind of intolerance. People are all, all at each other's throat and ready to drop the atom bomb on, on anybody. And we have plenty of atom bombs, I tell you. So therefore, we this intolerance of the other, intolerance to difference, intolerance to variety. This has to be addressed. If you don't address that, then again, humanity will be at the brink of the crisis. So therefore, yoga teaches you how to be calm, quiet. After all, yoga means bringing people together, isn't it? Yojane. Yojane. So we have to bring people together. And for the yojane, one has to yoga chitta vritti nirodha. One has to able to control one's emotion and become sarad, master of your own emotions and your thoughts. The yoga helps you to create a culture of tolerance, accommodation, understanding, and uh, leveraging every individual's unique uh, capabilities and properties so that we can create a win-win situation, uh, in a situation of flourishing together. So that also is uh, the reason why thinking people are moving towards yoga. So we find a migration from the culture of bhoga to the civilization of yoga, bringing things together, putting things together, and creating common flourish. So this particular day dedicated to the yoga, you find all kinds of dedication, Mother's Day, Father's Day, Uncle's Day, Brother's Day, Lover's Day, this day, that day. Of all these days, the most important day is the day of yoga. So I appreciate that Yoga Bharati under the leadership of Raghuramji and Anil and Ashwini that you are brought all these people together to discuss, to deliberate the importance of yoga. So it is not only just a preaching yoga, you have to practice yoga. Those who teach yoga should have a flat belly, otherwise you have no right to teach yoga. Because that is a sign of yoga, a flat belly. 
where you have mastery over the body. Because yoga begins with the body. In fact, it begins with the food. Control over the food. Control over the tongue, what you speak and what you ingest. There should be control. And that control, food control, then physical, then emotional, then intellectual, intellectual clarity and uh, ability of right judgment, and then spiritual flourish. All these are possible. So we are not only preach yoga, we should be a, we should represent the yoga. You should be a moving yogi, not a bhogi. How do you know he is a bhogi? Big belly. Have you know you are a yogi? Flat belly. So I implore all of you to develop that spirit of yoga. Be an exemplary, not just a preacher, but a practitioner. A practitioner speaks much more, hundred times more and powerful and convincingly than just a preacher of yoga. Yoga has got its relevance in psychological, because there is a lot of psychological problems going on. Because of the pandemic, you have to confine to your rooms and your homes. And even home, there is distance between parents. And because socially distancing at home, you cannot even embrace anybody or shake hands with anybody or have that contact. So people are becoming very solipsistic, you know, confining to themselves, which is very scary. So in this situation, uh, the, the psychological problems and issues, yoga can help because inside you, there is a greater world than outside. So inside you, so you can entertain yourself by looking into your own inner theater. And not only that, yoga, now this pandemic has given you an opportunity to reflect. Earlier we were in a rat race. Now this, we were on the brink of a breakdown, culturally, individually, wherever you, we are on the brink of a breakdown because of rat race. So before you break down, take a break so that you can have a breakthrough in your life. Look at the world from a different perspective. So as to when the pandemic is over, it has to be over. When it is over, the pandemic scare is over. You can go into the world as a brand new individual, a spiritually enlightened individual. So the pandemic has forced us to follow yoga. So on this International Day of Yoga, let us deliberate on the beauty and the power and the GDP value of yoga. That also is there. If your GDP value is there, you have to bring yoga into your social life and it will enhance your GDP. Not in metric term, not in mathematic, arithmetic terms, but in quality terms. So I thank all of you for giving me this opportunity, share my thoughts. Thank you very much. Thank you, Swamiji. Uh, that was uh, very wonderful. We were just beginning to uh, start enjoying the nectar and the time is up. So um, you all now heard Swamiji and uh, Swamiji conducts, uh, I, I loved that 21 days uh, Gita and now 21 days Upanishad. So please, 21 uh, sessions of Upanishad. So um, he conducts a lot of these uh, satsangs, please be part of it. And uh, before we proceed with uh, Raghuramji, just uh, we would like to take this opportunity to welcome all of you. Um, we, we have people from all over the globe so if you can just quickly text where you are from we will have all these um you know beautiful a uh, team that we feel like you know people write from wherever they are and that itself is a wonderful you know chat window where you can uh, just interact with each other don't do that when the talks are going on but right now yes there is nandini from arvine california welcome nandini uh someone uh, nachi from los angeles dallas san ramon uh, San Jose, Dallas, Austin, Bay Area, Austin, California, Cerritos, uh, Bengaluru, uh, Srijit, welcome, Oregon, Portland, uh, Tennessee, Cerritos, Bay Area, uh, New York, 
uh, wonderful, very, very nice to uh, see the, so many of Dublin, California, Ohio. Awesome, really awesome to see Boston. Yeah, we have uh, a whole uh, America and then even India represented here. Thank you very much, New York. Jaya, welcome. Saritos, okay, welcome. Now, uh, Raghuram Ji, we would like you to address uh, the group here. Uh, thank you very much for all the texts. Welcome to everyone one more time, Raghuram Ji. Namaste to all of you. And wonderful to see all of you on this platform. And it's so nice to hear on this, uh, first of all, pranam to Swamiji, under his guidance only that all this uh, activities of Yoga Bharati, everything is going on. And we always have a beautiful, beautiful association with uh, Prasad Kaipa. It goes to several decades and then such a beautiful association. And thanks to both of you being, being here. And um, to hear that all the activities already going on, so much of activity and so many people are involved. It's really satisfying to see that it's awesome that Ashwini and Anil, you are doing all that work in the International Day of Yoga. This is a wonderful, unique thing. Actually, there is one country which gives the Corona culture, pandemic culture, another country gives the yoga culture. See, that's a big difference, the way that we approach the whole thing. And uh, we try to help the people to see that they become better, they become healthy. And this has been the part of this particular culture itself. And when you look at that, where is this yoga coming from? I was just uh, uh, this uh, idea that, uh, you know, it is three Narendras who have given us the yoga. First is the Paramashiva Narendra. He brought the yoga to the world. He taught to uh, Parvati and that's how we have yoga. So that was the first Narendra. Another Narendra is the Narendra Tadatta, Swami Vekanda, brought the yoga to the international platform. That is what is international, uh, the Parliament of World Religions. And then where in his address, he spoke about all these four schemes of yoga, Raj Yoga, Karma Yoga, Jnana Yoga, Bhakti Yoga. And then the third Narendra, that is uh, Narendra Tadatta, who brought it to the United Nations in the form of International Day of Yoga. What a wonderful combination of three Narendras. But then some problem with some of these Narendras, actually. You know what? The first Narendra, he pestered his father-in-law to get married to his wife and all that. And then, you know, during that, father-in-law insulted in a marriage. And then he had to, she had to jump into the fire, Sati. All that complications. All right. Second Narendra, when we take it, and that man, he landed in America for representing in Parliament of World Religions in the month of April, because the announcement was for the April. When he landed here, he said, I'm sorry, we have postponed it to September. And man with $7 in his pocket, you can imagine what he can do. And that too in Chicago, like place, cold place, he came like a sw ordinary Swami Sanyasi and all those things. But then look at what happened. The moment that he got his entry into Parliament of World Religions, he created such an impact there. And he said that he's the best speaker of the whole parliament. He took over the whole parliament itself. That was the second Narendra. The same thing with the third Narendra. Before he came to become prime minister as a Gujarat chief minister, America never gave him the visa for several years. And the moment that he got his visa, he came as prime minister to America. First thing is that he created such a stir at the international forum. That's what is United Nations, where he started this International Day of Yoga. Most important thing is, this is the one re resolution in the United Nations, they say, that it was introduced in the same uh, meeting and then it was passed also in the same meeting. That credit should go to that. Now, why I'm referring to all those things is that all these three people had gone through all this crisis. And then what brought them out of this crisis so successfully, and the most successful persons is the power of yoga. Because they were holding on to that yoga so strongly, that's the reason why that they could come out of it. That's the power of yoga. And today, 
we are in the state of pandemic and that maybe you know first stage is over second stage and when people say about third stage it's not only this there may be several things that may be coming in this direction but what is that which can really help us to sail through all these difficulties as again i say is the idea of yoga and this yoga is something which really helps us to see that we maintain as swami ji said so beautifully that we are isolated we are with our computers and we are not meeting with anybody even in the family we are outside you know all these things which are supposed to be the things that helps us to realize the importance of inner journey inward journey and that's what is the way that yoga helps us to see that we go whether it is you do the asanas you do the pranayama you do the meditation these are all the things to see that how we can go from grosser world to the subtler world outer world to the inner world and to the material world to the spiritual world and that's what is patanjali suggestion in fact the world outside is that you are identified with that vritti sarupya mitratrah and vritti nirodha takes us to swarupa and that is what is the journey of yoga and that's what we are trying to do it so this particular idea of yoga what we are uh, we are giving is something which is uh, not new it is something which has come from age old and we also have situations where even the most difficult try situations we can really help we can make the help, yoga as something which can take us forward in fact in this context i would like to say but one more thing is that uh, these days we hear particularly in india a lot of cases where somehow that all this uh, thanks to vaccine that we have and the treatment modalities that we have we can people are coming out of covid all, all right but post covid complications is something which people are suffering from and essentially the post covid com- com- complications are two areas one area is the respiratory area and the other is the cardiac area number of cases that we come across people suffer from cardiac arrest or maybe suffer from this uh, you know paralysis or suffer from respiratory disorders pneumonia these are the cases that we hear as post covid complications in fact in india particularly madhya pradesh they have opened their hospital specially post covid ward that means how important it is to see that this case is taken care of now when you look at all these things the cardiac problems and the respiratory problems that which can really address that to make you strengthen strong inside an immune system better and that's what yoga can do us the practice of pranayama practice of meditation practice of simple breathing exercises and simple practice of yoga will really help us so we developed a lot of such programs to see that how we can reach to the people now on the internet there are so many programs which are there free people can really download and then do the practices and they are doing it so that way that these practices of yoga really helps us as swami ji puts another thing anything that we introduce to our body <coughs> is something that we should be really careful about that's what people have realized after this covid conditions people are very careful in what they eat how they eat wash their hands and so many conditions that are there all these conditions what you are wash your feet wash your legs put your clothes for wash and all these things but they're not the mess messages from this culture that we have learned they were part of this culture nobody need to tell us and therefore basically along with yoga what's happening is that the culture that has come from this particular ancient civilization that has come sanatan dharma is now being part of the world and the world is accepting and the more and more that these things are taken up naturally what happens is people rush for the material rush for the material progress and uh, uh, this thing uh, accumulation of all those things will easily come out of they, they can easily come out of it they realize what is the real value of life in fact uh, sadhvi ritambara said so very beautifully he said the items the material that you have to use for that you have use you use that you are the uh, master of those material but those that you accrue more than what you use you are a watchman god sent you to this world as a watchman as a owner and you converted yourself by watchman by getting more and more things unnecessarily running behind the activities 
So this is how, how much that we have really plundered the nature outside. You need to realize that. In fact, such a beautiful sight that we see, number of people were unnecessarily traveling so much. All that has come down with the help of uh, COVID and this uh, lockdown situation. Another very important thing is that the roads are clean, everything is beautiful. I see that in India, people say from Chandigarh, they can see the top peaks of Himalayas, which they never saw for the last 100 years. And they could see it because basically that air pollution has come down, water pollution has come down, and people are staying with the family and eating out. Ir irresponsibly, people were eating. All that has come out. See how many things that way that we are contributed towards a better way of life. All these things naturally will push us towards a better lifestyle condition. That's what is yoga. Often people think that yoga is for only the youngsters who can bend the body, who can twist the body and all those things. Nothing. We have such practices, such ideas which are there for the young and old, children and adults. And then for everybody it is there. So therefore, that yoga has so much to offer and all those things are coming out now. Earlier, what used to happen is uh, yoga means only a few postures that is their condition. But today, you can see that the flood of these things coming into the picture. Another very important idea that people, when they start looking at these things, they started interested, they started gaining interest in the literature. And then where these yoga ideas are coming from? It's coming from the origin of India and Sanskrit. So therefore, I see that how many different schools are now learning Sanskrit. And it is because basically that this is one thing which can support the ideas of yoga that they are learning. So therefore, in multi different ways that yoga application is spreading in so many different ways. In fact, recently that there is one girl from Peru and she wrote me saying that, how her life has completely changed with the help of yoga. She came to Prashanti, she did yoga, and she presented a beautiful article in the local journal that she sent it to me. Another interesting fact is that in Turkey, one of the you know girls who was attending my yoga classes, the husband, one day happened to give me a ride somewhere I had to go, and then she was driving me in a car. And he said, uh, broken English because Turkish do not know much English. And then say, he said, Raghuram, can I tell you something? I said, oh, you know English? I said, yeah. I said, I want to tell you that I must thank you that my wife is learning yoga. What? Ever since she started going for yoga, we have such a wonderful harmony at home. That was the message of yoga. So like that, it is at individual level, it is at the family level, the society level, environment level, nation level, global level. We are able to bring about such a wonderful change with the help of yoga. And there is another very important aspect is that it is we who need to take the yoga forward. What happens is that the leaders like Narendra Modi, he makes an announcement. He creates that platform for International Day of Yoga. But then who has to take it? We have to take it. More and more number of people should involve in that. I'm so very glad that Yoga Bharati in USA is conducting so many programs like, for example, Yogathan and Surya Namaskara Yajna and all these things. Some people attend this, some people attend that, some people attend diabetes program, some people attend hypertension program. But whatever may be the thing that you are spreading your uh, people, you are taking the message of yoga to a variety of people in such a way that ultimately that this network is something which is really very beautiful, very happy. Actually, on this occasion, Swamiji-like persons are the persons who have to give us the Ashirvad and who has to give us the guidance. And then I take humbly what Swamiji's message and I carry it on to all your people of Yoga Bharti, both in Bangalore and USA and all that. And let's march forward. We are inspired by Swamiji's talk. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Raghuram Ji. Uh, this is um, 
beautiful yoga sangam by three uh, wonderful yoga gurus here with uh, more than 108 guests here and we are going to do 108 surya namaskars or 108 minutes of yoga uh, and uh, that is just an amazing uh, sangam let's just uh, i know time is you have uh, you are you are uh, itching to go and practice now and of course swamiji even said you, it's not just preaching but practice yes we are all geared up for it and we have wonderful uh, last speaker is not the least speaker he's just uh, an electrifying speaker so please bear with us we are running late but it's not really anything negative we are actually getting jnana yajna here uh, before the yoga practice yajna so please uh, stay back we have uh, just sent you an email with all three rooms Raghuramji, we followed your advice you didn't want us to just keep on doing surya namaskars we, you wanted us to do other uh, forms of yoga so that's why all all of this is done and we also have the other two tracks where we have focus on pranayama and, and meditation and everything so now over to prasadji and also as an announcement we will open the rooms as soon as uh, prasadji is done so if you have an email we'll also be putting on the chat here uh what are those three rooms for you and this is the main room is going to be for surya namaskars okay over to you prasadji thank you Aswiniji. And uh, Namaste Swamiji and uh, uh, Namaste Raguji. It's wonderful to be with all of you. And I think Swamiji covered how do we move from um, bhoga to yoga. And Raghuramji covered from how do we move from one Narendra to another Narendra and how we can actually become the Indra of Naras by doing the yoga. I think between the uh, yoga and boga, we're going through the stage of roga. So that is the one which filled up the gap. How do we move from boga to yoga? So as uh, both of the Swami and Raghuramji pointed out, there is some cleansing that is happening whether it is the cleansing of the environment, cleansing of the rivers, cleansing of the hearts, and there is an opening, there is a space that is uh, taking place, which is creating all kinds of opportunities for us. And if we truly look at that space, even if we try to talk about the, uh, how do we say, Chitta Vritti Nirodha Yoga, if we try to look at it, that chitta comes from chit, right? Chit means consciousness. So from chit, it becomes chitta when it comes into individual. So what are we trying to do? We are trying to become conscious because chit essentially means consciousness. How do we bring consciousness? That is the purpose of yoga. By chitta vritti nirodha, we are actually moving from chitta to chit, chidakasa to a certain extent. So in that space, something can be done very nicely and it has got a relevance to even work. You know, like in many parts of the world, the work is opening up. People are saying hybrid workplaces. Some people are saying you need to come back to work. And, uh, you know, but what is interesting is many of us have gotten tired of sometimes doing the work Zoom sessions, right? Or uh, other kinds of sessions. What is unique about Zoom sessions? Like, as you notice, if I'm talking, I am pinned. So that means whether I like it or not, I get to see myself in the big screen and everybody else to see just my face on the big screen. That means whether I'm conscious or not, how I'm breathing, how I'm moving, whether I'm actually sitting quietly, calmly, or I'm just fidgeting, moving this way, that way, everything actually gets uh, amplified. So same thing is happening when you are sitting in meetings as well. So that means suddenly, if you don't have awareness of your own body posture, how you are sitting, how are you sitting like this or are you sitting with proper posture 
are you breathing you know in a way that gives you certain relief or if there is a tension on your face or if you are holding your body very stiff or if you are showing certain kinds of emotions all of that is being projected onto the big screen at least when we were sitting in meetings everybody were looking at their own iphones or their own android devices or their own uh, computers and they didn't pay attention to you but now with all these video sessions and video calls you are actually on the big screen most of the time whether you like it or not that means there is an increased need for us to really pay attention to are we conscious of how we look are we conscious of how we breathe are we conscious of our posture are we conscious of our expression you know once upon a time in executives they used to talk about executive presence now your presence is actually becoming much of the highlight not just the way in which you show up so for all of that what helps the most is your ability to practice and take this yoga to much deeper level like uh, for the first time after yoga day has been introduced in past 3 4 years there is more and more awareness of actually not just the asanas now people are saying we need to pay attention to pranayama and thanks to the thanks to mindfulness which people talked about and people are realizing mindfulness is only a one part of it it's actually very small part of it but we talk about the dharana and dhyana ultimately we need to do the samyama so that means how to concentrate on things how to focus on things when we need to pay attention to and how to defocus on things so that we can actually pay attention to a bigger picture all of them are part of yoga sutras so in some respects as uh, swami ji and raghuram ji had mentioned we need to pay attention to the environment inner and outer we need to pay attention to each other we need to pay attention to ourselves and at some level we need to pay attention to what value are we creating are we creating value by by certain uh, state of mind so when we talk about yoga stak kuru karmani are we actually doing this yoga state of mind whatever we are learning from doing the yogas doing surya namaskara during meditation during i mean doing the pranayama can we take it in such a way that we can do yoga off the mat not just on the mat yoga i think when we can do it if all of us the 113 of us who are on this line if we can begin to pay attention to and be conscious of what are we bringing into our lives after this yagna after this particular session into our families and into our workplace in a conscious way by controlling our emotions by chitta vritti nirodha right that's what we are trying to do can we can we control our um, you know both what you might call the clinging emotions clinging emotions as well as the aversions that we bring in if we can begin to do some of those then we create the space in that space the universe the consciousness the narayana himself can actually begin to unconceal it is not that he will show up you know the narayana is already there whether we call shiva whether we call narayana whether we call devi all of them that consciousness that one whom you cannot and you do not describe by any guna all of them that person that consciousness becomes available to us and by our yoga state of mind we will be able to bring that consciousness to everybody else so the yoga is not just about what we do today can we have that attitude can we do that pranayama that kind of a breathing that posture control can we bring it into our meetings can we bring it into our workplace into the society if we can do that then 
I think we are going to be truly yogis in every stage and in every moment of our life. Hopefully, that's what you all will pay attention to, that what you are doing is not just in the room, on the mat, but wishing you all bringing it into the world so that the world begins to see, wow, there is something unique about these people. There is something different about the way in which they hold themselves, the way in which they breathe, the way in which they smile, and the way in which they control their emotions, then we will actually become the role models for other people and we will inspire other people to take up yoga, take up pranayama, wishing that on all, each and every one of you and thanking for the wonderful words Swamiji and Raghuramji had said and wishing all the best to Ashwini um, and uh, everybody, all the volunteers who have been able to put this together. Let us continue the sessions, yoga sessions. Thank you very much uh, all, uh, to all three uh, gurus. Uh, if you can just stay there, we'll just take a picture. Uh, this is how we take pictures, by the way. <laughs> so uh, just give us a second. Uh, yes, we just captured you on the screen here uh, with the note. Uh, just give me one more second. Uh, one more second. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. And... Uh, uh, we'll now move on with the program and uh, uh, the three rooms are announced and Reshma, can you put that those that exact email to uh, to uh, on this chat window as well that way they all will join uh, you, when you join you just click on one of the rooms and it just says should we end this zoom session uh, you end your zoom session it won't end ours so don't worry about it and just uh, go on to your room and um, one more time, a big thanks to all three uh, of you. Uh, uh, this is a, also a curtain raiser. Uh, before we, uh, if, please don't go yet. Uh, before we go, um, just want to announce this is a curtain raiser for our 20 years of celebration of Yoga Bharati's found, um, you know, existence. So uh, we are going to have some programs and also uh, a, a program, a grand program in September. And we will call you once again to bless us. And uh, we also want to tell everyone here that Yoga Bharati offers various programs fr from pregnancy, that is when the child is still in the womb, to all the way up to, uh, you know, 100 years old. So we have an entire life cycle uh, yoga for the whole life cycle, uh, yoga for pregnant women, uh, children youth yoga sessions as well as youth yoga teacher training which is now going on and some 20 youth are participating another 20 youth will be participating in batch two in just summer and then we have uh, yoga teacher training for adults uh, 16 and above actually and then we have uh, diploma in yoga therapy which is a uh, all uh, ciyt uh, iyt accredited uh, courses available for you and most of the most importantly we are not uh, here to just collect certificates this is a very very sadhana oriented uh, program with a lot of internal transformation as guruji dr nagendra always brings it internal transformation is our goal so that's why a small ratio and with a lot of deep dive into yoga with a lot of uh, inner uh, experience and um, you know inner uh, our own taking responsibility as opposed to putting the responsibility on the gurus to save us and to give us moksha no we say nobody's going to give you moksha you are working on your own and so we follow this just we call ourselves mentors not gurus and we follow a very uh, i don't like to say guru less because it makes no sense to say that but basically it's not restricted to any one guru we take the whole universe as a guru the Chinamurti as a guru and we just uh, follow uh, our sadhana so sadhana based courses so this is all uh, as an announcement please do uh, stay with us come to these courses classes you know free programs webinars everything is open money is not our primary intention uh, money is only needed to do these programs, but otherwise many of our volunteers are simply working as volunteers. With that, uh, you know, thanking all the volunteers, all the uh, teachers here, uh, we'll move on. Thank you.